GRPC is seven times faster than a traditional API. This is the reason why I wanted to learn GRPC and the reason why I'm going about learning it right now. I am by no means an expert on GRPC. I have some limited experience with it and I'm working with it every day trying to learn it. But again, I am not an expert on it. This is more of a high level overview of what it is, a little example of how to implement it and what it actually does when you're running it and sort of an explanation on where to use it. Again, this is not a full deployment guide or anything like that. I'll probably do that later, but it's something I wanted to look at because I'm thinking about re-architecting some parts of Insider Vids and I want to, I use separate services on the back end. I use a Go server to handle data fetching and aggregation and stuff. And then I handle all of the form sending and stuff, typically within TypeScript or whatever. So I want to set it up. I want to set up GraphQL because I think that'd be really useful for the way we handle our forms. So I want to set up a GraphQL gateway and I want to write that in a pop server but then I want to have a Golang backend which will actually parse and fetch those forms from a database um, it'll fetch them from a database then run some aggregations on them and then I need a way for that gateway and that server to communicate and that's what led me to gRPC and what gRPC is it's a way for services to communicate with each other just like rest except it is substantially faster now when I tell you it's seven times faster than REST, then the natural question is, why are we not using gRPC for everything? And the reason for that is A, it is not widely adopted, and B, it requires way more boilerplate and setup than a REST API. A REST API can be thrown together in like five minutes, two minutes if you know what you're doing and you have a framework, and it just works. This whole backend and getting this basic client server setup where I have this client that's running every second it's sending re requests to the server to ask it to sum two random numbers and then it gets the response back and prints it here. That This whole thing took me like an hour to set up and I knew what I was doing and I knew I, where I was going. It just takes longer to set these up because there is so much boilerplate involved. So what gRPC really is for is it's for inner process communication within your own kind of walled garden internal server layer thing. So if you imagine you have like your internal architecture where it's just services that your app is touching, that's where you want to use gRPC. You want to communicate between your gateway and each of your different services. It's basically for microservices. This is to communicate between your microservices, but not with like an end user's app or with a client or something like that. So let's take a look at how this is actually being implemented. So the first thing we need to take a look at on the client, on the server side is gonna be this protos directory and this calculator.proto. So when you are using gRPC, you first have to define a schema and this is using protobuf or proto3 here. And this is effectively defining, okay, so what routes are we gonna have and what are the types going in and out? How are we going to serialize this data? So I'm saying that this, um, I'm defining an RPC of add nums, and I'm telling it that I'm going to pass in a message of add request. It's going to have a float of num1 and a float of num2. This 1 and 2 are not default values. These are actually just telling it that these are two different values to serialize them differently. So it's just indicating that these are different values. Then we have add reply, which is just a float num, and that's going to be these two numbers summed together. So this is effectively defining a schema for what my um, for what the requests are going to look like coming to this server. So that since this is my server, I need to implement this service. And then on my client, I'm going to call this service and pass in this message. So let's look at how you would actually implement that. So going into my server right here, I first have to do some boilerplate setup. I have to load the proto file. So I'm loading this file. Then I have to define the package, do all this stuff, set up you know the basic stuff here. Then I need to do, um, <clears throat> then I need to actually initialize my calc proto. So you just load the package definition. This is all being done with the gRPC, gRPC JS package, doing all this stuff. And then where it gets interesting is when I actually implement the method. So if you remember over here, we have this add nums method. I have this add nums over here and I have a call and a call back. The call is what's going to be passed in from the client that is actually requesting this. And then the call back is what I'm going to be sending to the end user and the client. So the way this is going to work is it's pretty similar to REST. Obviously, if you're familiar with that, we have a request or a call, and then we have a response or a callback. So here I'm going to take num1 and num2 out of my request. I'm going to get my API key off. So the way I'm securing this is I have to pass in an API key. If I didn't have that API key, it would throw it unauthorized. But then assuming that's there, I'm just going to go ahead and send a callback of num and then num1 plus num2, send it down. No issue. Finally, down here in main, we're just initializing this. So I'm just adding this, I'm creating a new server, and then I'm adding this server, this service to the server. 
If you remember over here, we are actually implementing all this, so I need to add this RPC to my server. We go ahead and we bind this, and then we create an insecure instance. So I'm not actually securing this over TLS, which is the protocol that this operates on. I'm just securing this over my API key. So I'm securing it via the headers. It's not ideal, but again, this is just a little demo. So doing this, starting my server, and now let's take a look at the client. So the client is going to have the same schema. So it's going to have this dot proto schema. And the reason why I duplicate this is because in real life, these would be separate repos and separate things. And one of the most, one of the coolest things about this is it's um, polyglot. So that means that it can be ex this can be used in any different language and can communicate between languages really easily. So I could have a Go server and a TypeScript client, and they would communicate beautifully over this gRPC layer and communicate very, very fast. And that's the reason why I want to use it, because I want to create a TypeScript gateway, and I want to create a Go server back here, which will do all the, uh, the reading, writing, and then more importantly, the aggregations, because IO is fine on TypeScript, but massive aggregations and calculations that I need concurrency for, not so fine. So I want that in Go, and then I want the TypeScript gateway to be written in Apollo, because I think it's a lot nicer to work with than Go is. So then I can connect those two together with gRPC, and then you have a backend. So we've got this proto in here, and then now if we look at our actual client code, it's going to be pretty similar. We have to load our proto, we have to set up the thing, and then our, yeah, set up our calc proto object. Then finally, we need to set up a target. So this target is just going to say, okay, we're connecting to this URL here, so it's going to be localhost um, 50,051. We define our new client, so we create a new client, pass in the target. Again, we're doing insecure credentials, but the way we're securing this is via metadata and headers and API keys. So I set up my API key, it's going to be 12345, add that to my header, so at metadata.add x API key. And then down here, I'm just, I set up a set interval thing, so the reason why this just keeps going and going is because I have this executing every second. So every second, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create two random numbers, num1 and num2, and I'm going to add those two numbers together on the server. So I'm just going to pass in my first argument is going to be the actual request body, or not request body, but the request message. So the message, which is going to fulfill this requirement here, so it's going to have the float of num1, num2. It's going to be passed in here. Metadata is going to contain my API key and stuff. And then over here, I have my callback. So this is what's being returned from the server. So I am going to go ahead and take my error. If the error exists, I'll just console.log the error. And then if we get a response back, that response will be in this shape of num and then whatever the number is. So then I can just, you see over here, we have an object with num and then whatever that number is. So like I said, this is a very basic example of this, but hopefully this sort of gives you an idea of how this would work. You would need to go ahead and uh, build out these schemas between each of your services and it defines how they're going to communicate with each other and then you go ahead and you build each service you implement these contracts effectively and then they can communicate with each other extremely fast it uses http2 it is much faster than rest and but of course you can't really use this for you couldn't connect your front end to this because it's not widely supported you can't do this like if you're setting up a third party API or something so that your clients can connect to your API. You don't want to do it in gRPC. It's purely for internal use. It's for connecting microservices, but it does a really, really good job of that. So yeah, 